Um, I have the difficult task to optimize uh, the result of the failed trial to get some optimism based on negative survival result. So I will use the data that I've been obtained in the pyoglitazone trial, thanks to the German ALS network, and try to raise, using this data, new hypothesis about weight loss in ALS. Okay, first, just a small background. I am not a neurologist, I am a basic scientist, and this is how I went into ALS. We noticed about 10 years ago that these mice, mutant SOD1 mice, were leaner, you see here body weight, than their wild type counterparts, and that this was not due to decreased food intake, but while on the contrary, these mice have increased food intake. So they are leaner, but have less body weight. And this is due just like in patients, and this had been published by Philippe Couratier a few years before us in patients, and by Ed Kazarskis also, that these ALS patients, just like SOD1 mice, have increased energy expenditure, both total and resting. This means while they are asleep, these mice have a 20, 25% increase in energy expenditure. Okay. And this is of importance because if you correct the energy deficit, then you make these mice live longer. Here it's mutant SOD1 mice under high fat feeding, just simply putting fat in their diet, make them live 25% 20 longer than their counterparts, and also you delay neurodegeneration, you delay motor neuron disease. In patients, exactly the same metabolic situation, weight loss due to weight loss, decreased energy stores, due to increased energy metabolism, and also decreased food intake due to dysphagia uh, in the case of bulbar symptoms. And you can also relate this to exercise that might be a risk factor for ALS. So this is where we came to pyoglitazone. When I went to Ulm uh, to meet uh, Albert Ludolf uh, three years ago, um, he told me that uh, the German ALS network had done a clinical trial on pyoglitazone. And I was very excited about this because pyoglitazone is one of the few drugs where everyone knows that if you give pyoglitazone to a patient, he or she will gain five kilograms of weight. That has been shown repeatedly in at least five clinical trials. Uh, this is a picture, and I, th this is a picture from a, a clinical trial uh, for hepatic steatosis that has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and there are three papers in New England Journal of Medicine with pyoglitazone, the same dose that was used in the German clinical trial. All these patients have far three to five kilograms increase in body weight. This is repeatedly shown. So I thought, okay, if we give pyoglitazone to ALS patients, they should have increased body weight, and maybe they would live longer. And then the next sentence that Albert told me was that, unfortunately, the trial was negative. So this is the structure of the trial. I will skip this. No, absolutely no effect on survival. You see here the red curve, pyoglitazone, the blue curve, placebo. No effect on functional rating scale. So very disappointing. So we published this, but we had all the data on biomarkers, especially weight, and also markers of efficacy of pyoglitazone. And the next question was, did really pyoglitazone work? Did pyoglitazone increase weight as expected or not? And did pyoglitazone also gain all the expected molecular effects it has, and we know it has. For instance, in patients, it's been also shown several times that pyoglitazone decreases circulating liver enzymes. You see here, in the same clinical trial, 
uh, asset and alat. And we have exactly the same trends in ALS patients. We also observe decreased glycemia. We observe, also observe increased adiponectin. So this means, yes, pyoglitazone worked, and it yielded all the peripheral effects of pyoglitazone, but not on body weight. Absolutely nothing in terms, no trend, no significant difference while five clinical trials in other diseases had reached an opposite result. So maybe it was due to Riluzol, because all the patients were on Riluzol. Maybe it was due to, I don't know, any confounding factors in clinical trial. So what we did, oh, I just. So when we published the, the results of the trial, there were two papers that appeared in Nature Medicine showing that pioglitazone increased weight through CNS effects, specifically by activating the transcription factor P par gamma in the hypothalamus. So for instance, these two papers, one showed by knocking out P par gamma in the brain that rosiglitazone, a pioglitazone analog, had no effect on body weight anymore. And the other one showed that if you inject st stereotactically pyoglitazone, or indeed it was rosiglitazone, in the hypothalamus, then you increase food intake. So there are many more data in these two papers, but they all show that pyoglitazone leads to weight gain, its adverse effect, through hypothalamic relays. And then we just had a look at the Hypothalamus. So this is just to show you how uh, complicated it is. But unfortunately, to my knowledge, there are, there are absolutely no studies on hypothalamic nuclei in ALS. And I would be grateful if anybody has this kind of data. But there are many nuclei that are all involved in energy metabolism and food intake. For instance, the arcuate nucleus, the lateral hypothalamus, uh, the VMN, DMH, etc. And many, many neuropeptides are involved in the regulation of energy intake. This is very complicated and is be beginning to be dissected excuse me, uh, in the mouse. For pyoglitazone, what we know from the literature is that pyoglitazone acts in two types of cells, POMC and AGRP neurons in the arcuate nucleus, to fight oxidative stress and decreased oxidative stress leads to increased food intake in these two cells. OK, so as I mentioned before, this was all clinical data. And there are many confounders we cannot control for, any, for many things in patients. So I came back to my uh, favorite model, uh, mutant SOD1 mice. And we did a simple experiment. We gave pyoglitazone or vehicle to the same mouse with a different, uh, with one week delay, right, and the mice were randomized to the treatment, and we measured food intake during 24 hours. And we observed exactly the same effect in the literature, 10% increase in, in food intake, which you might find not very high, but if you think that you, if you just eat 10% more for, for month, you will probably gain five kilograms of weight. But we, definitely not observed similar things in Newton's son mice, no trend. So these mice are also resistant to pyoglitazone, just like patients. And this is my last slide. So we are now beginning to dissect what occurs in the hypothalamus. Is there a defect in the hypothalamus that might explain weight loss? And to be very rude, in the beginning, we just screened for many neuropeptides, gene expression, and we observed a very consistent decrease in POMC and an increase in HGRP, and both are antagonists. So I will let you there. We are just dissecting the cause of POMC downregulation and the effect of POMC downregulation, and also investigating other neuropeptides and their role in weight loss in ALS. So the take-home message, 
is that maybe pioglitazone did not increase body weight in, in patients because hypothalamic relays were abnormal. And that has obvious consequences in terms of, for, let's say, nutritional management, because if these neuropeptides are not able to sense the metabolic environment, then you might think that these patients might become resistant to high fat feeding, for instance, or to other um, kinds of nutritional treatments, such as pyrotazole, and you might explain why they lose weight or why they do not gain weight, despite, for instance, nutritional advice. So just to acknowledge the people that uh, uh, did the clinical trial, this is the Job ALS uh, Consortium, and these are the collaborators, and these are people in our lab in Strasbourg, uh, that did the, the job and uh, my uh, clinical collaborators, Albert Ludolf and Jan Kasubek in Ulm, and Vincent Ménager and Pierre François Prada in Paris. I uh, thank you for your attention. And this. Uh, and this is very important. This is, these are the people that give the money to support our research. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, with your data, you make made more complicated what was is already complicated. Probably there are disturbances also in, in the mechanism of uh, feed, uh, feeding and so on. So that, that's uh, that's very important for. But but I think that makes sense in uh, in uh, the weight uh, loss and the weight management for ALS patients. This is why I show. Yeah. Although this is very premature for the. That, that's uh, that's very important, really. Thank you.